If you're not from Iowa, you might be surprised to learn that Iowa, as part of the upper Midwest, has its own lingo. So if you're moving here, you should know some of our linguistic quirks and turns of phrases so that you're not left confused in the middle of a conversation. I've got 13 words or things that are distinctly Iowan for you today. Hey, it's your lucky day. Hi, I'm Emily Farber and I'm a realtor in the greater Iowa City area. I help people move here from all over the country and the world. I love to talk to people who found me on YouTube. So if you're thinking about relocating to the Iowa City or Cedar Rapids metro areas, reach out to me. You can find all of my contact information in the description box down below this video. Okay, let's get started with your video Cliff Notes version of how to talk like an Iowan, or at least decipher what we're saying. Number one, taking the gravel. This means you're planning to take the back roads. If you're a bicyclist, this is a specific genre of bicycling, and they even make bikes that are specifically designed for this subset of cyclists. Iowa is known for its extensive network of gravel roads. In fact, 60% of Iowa's public road system is gravel, bringing us into sixth place in the nation for the most unpaved mileage available. Gravel roads connect almost every single community across our 99 counties. Gravel roads are usually pretty sparsely traveled, so they're a nice way to slow down and literally help you take the road less traveled. Two, speaking of traveling, if you're in a car and someone riding with you calls out padiddle and then whacks you on the arm, they're playing a car game. A padiddle is a vehicle with one headlight burnt out. I guess the game is like Slugbug back in the day when there were still a fair number of VW Beetles on the road. Number three, RAGBRAI. This word is actually an acronym and it stands for the Register's Annual Great Bicycle Ride Across Iowa. This is a super famous ride that happens each July with thousands and thousands of bicycle participants. Riders start on the western side of Iowa at the Missouri River and then they follow a predetermined route all the way across the state until they get to the Mississippi River on the eastern side of the state a week later. It's like a massive rolling party and each year the route is widely anticipated. Each town that has an overnight stop on the route just rolls out the welcome mat for their sweaty and sunburnt bicycle guests. Number four, pop. I know this might be kind of controversial, but it is called pop. Not soda, not cola. Number five, parking ramp. This one is weird. It never even occurred to me that the ramp is called other names in other places, but apparently people in other states call them parking garages. If somebody asks if you're parking in the ramp, they're probably talking about a parking garage. Number six, knee high by the 4th of July. If you hear someone say this and wonder what in the world they are talking about, rest assured they're talking about corn. It's a farmer's almanac general rule of thumb that if a farmer's corn is at least knee high by the 4th of July, their crop is on track for a good yield by the end of the growing season. Seven, oh, oh is a phrase used by upper Midwesterners to politely excuse themselves or express surprise. For instance, if you bump into someone or you need to squeeze by someone or you're acknowledging just a little bit of clumsiness, like you, you drop something on the floor and have to pick it up. It's not so much even a word, but more like just a reflexive sound. Eight, cornhole. This is a yard game with two boards that have holes in them and then bean bags. You try to toss into those holes. The rest of the world mistakenly calls this game bags. Nine, puppy chow. This is not dog food. It's a snack made from rice check cereal, peanut butter and melted chocolate, and then rolled around in powdered sugar. 10, dinner and supper. Some people use these words interchangeably to mean the last meal or the evening meal of the day. However, there is a distinction that often arises, especially if the people you're feeding come from a farming background. My grandparents who were farmers ate breakfast, dinner, and supper, not breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The difference is that the middle meal, which they called dinner, was the largest meal of the day because there's still a lot of labor left to be done and you need a good meal to fuel yourself for the rest of the workday. Supper 
is a smaller meal in the evening. In fact, it's often just leftovers from the noon dinner meal. 11. Tenderloin. This is a type of pork sandwich that is pounded thin, breaded, and then fried. It's usually at least twice the size of the bun it's served on, and it's tasty. 12. Made right. This is also a type of sandwich that is a loose meat sandwich, cooked ground beef with seasonings. Not exactly a sloppy joe because it doesn't have that tomato-based sauce mixed in, but it's in the same subset of types of sandwiches. 13. Guys. Despite technically being a masculine verb to describe a group of male people, hey guys or you guys actually means everybody regardless of gender. Alrighty, there you have it, a crash course in how to speak Iowan. If you have any more distinctly Iowan things that you've noticed, tell me about it down there in the comments section. Hey, it's been fun, and I'll catch you later.